Hello, I'm Uche. Welcome back to my channel or my podcast because I'm actually not sure which one I'm going to post this on. Probably both. We'll see. But um, so today we're going to be talking about why my church kind of effed up their witness and how my church effed up their witness in 2020 and honestly moving into 2021. Huh. And what I mean by when they say like they, they kind of effed up their witness, they messed up their witness. They were not a good example to non-believers. They did not look like Christ. They kind of gave authority away that they shouldn't have given away. Given away. But before I start, um, I just want to make sure everyone knows that people understand that I'm not doing this to be like, rah, 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 you're the worst. I mean, I wanted to because I wanted to be big mad and be big mean, but I can't say that they're the worst because sometimes I'm the worst. And luckily I have friends that tell me what I did wrong, especially Christian friends, because they tell me what I did wrong and then how I am not being in line with the gospel. But I want to be truthful. I don't want to be like a mean person, but I just want to be, um, I just, I want to hold people accountable. So anyone who watches this video, if you don't go to Watermark Community Church, um, you can disagree or you can agree, whatever. But the question is, I want everyone to ask themselves. We're going to take it back to Sunday school today. OK, WWJD, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And if their actions and their behavior and their words were not what Jesus would do, which I believe that there were not, then they, as my elders and my pastors would say, they missed a layup. And I'm not just going to complain. I'm going to actually say what the correct response would have been. And if you don't think that's my place, um, it's too bad. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so first way, we'll start with the January 6th riots, the January 6th insurrection instance. So I kind of got annoyed with this because um, the day after the, the insurrection, like nothing was really said. Um, well, here's a kind of a clip about the only thing that was actually said at the sermon on Sunday, on Sunday, but you can listen to that. If you looked at the last week that our country has had, I think you would, you would be right to say, it looks like our country has our priorities collectively out of whack. As you watched, perhaps like I did, the news this week and saw something on the TV that I thought was more akin to another country on the planet as people stormed our nation's Capitol building and as there was chaos around that, I thought, man, we have got our priorities way out of whack. And it's a tragedy. Um, it was nothing. There was no post. I mean, honestly, they don't have to post on Instagram if they don't want to or social media. But th this is a moment where the church should have a voice. And here's the problem. I think they kind of gave away their voice in 2020. That's probably like why they couldn't really speak up on this. But we'll talk about that part later. But honestly, um, that insurrection that happened, I'm going to just say three quick things. First of all, it might surprise people, but whatever. First of all, um, after the election, a lot of people were hurt. A lot of people are scared. Um, and I know I have like a lot of more liberal friends, but because I've been, I mean, I'll teach you guys, I've been trying to unlearn my prejudices against um, uh, people. I actually have gotten had to have really good conversations with people and conservatives who are Christian conservatives who are um, who are just really nervous. They are scared of socialism because um, one of my good friends, she's from she's from um, she's from a socialist country. And she's like how it is over there. Like, it's not good. It's really scary. And so she's scared of United States becoming that. And in my in any of my liberal friends who might be like, well, no, that's impossible. Like we all saw how easily we, we almost end up with a dictator. Let's just be real. OK. We can see how fragile democracy is. So I don't want to discount those fears for no reason. OK, so talking to her, um, I understand that's like that's a thing. Um, what I think is really important to understand is that everyone who's upset about Trump's loss is not just an American white man who, you know, a proud boy or whatever. Some people are people them from Venezuela. Right. They came from a socialist country and they've been made, you know, they they hate They don't like it there. That's why they came to America. And so they're actually scared that that's going to happen to America. So with that knowledge, there are people who are upset and just like just very much distraught about that. Um, so instead of honestly, instead of my church saying nothing, it's OK to acknowledge that people are scared and are hurt. Um, I think maybe there's a fear from my church to be like, oh, we don't want to offend people who did vote for Biden. It's like, no, like we can, you know, the Bible tells us to mourn with those who mourn. You know, there are people who are happy right now. And there are people who are scared and um, who are scared about like, you know, abortion being uh, becoming just a regular thing. There are people who are just upset and we can acknowledge that fear and we can acknowledge that. Just that uneasiness. And like and here's the thing, like a lot of those people who are lied to, 
They believed the words of someone they trusted. They, you know, they could have, they were lied to. <laughs> there was no evidence of voter fraud and they were, they feel betrayed. And that's something that, um, it's unfortunate and people can scoff at it, but really when people believe something, especially when someone they trust tells them that we have to understand that that's not something that they came to on their own, but it's something that's also very important to understand. And we can warn with those people. It's like, Hey, I understand. I understand why you'd be hurt. Not just like, okay, forget we have to start over. It's like people, people, these are like some people's families are irreparably harmed because of conspiracy theories, because of lies. And I think it's a part of like lamenting and acknowledging the brokenness that is possible and that is here in this world. So I think that was a missed opportunity for people to kind of be there for each other and kind of hear each other's side and just for the church to be like, hey, we need to be here for each other and just mourn with those who mourn. Those are different perspectives. OK, um, but anyways, the second thing that I think that my church kind of messed up on by just saying nothing, the fact that people that were in the in, insurrection, right, I saw the videos. There was a lot of prayer happening. People were talking about their conservative Christian values and, you know, why they voted for Trump for Christian values. And, you know, there's one sign that says Jesus saves. And, all. and I'm like, OK. OK, so this is what gets me. People would draw a lot of false equivalencies between Black Lives Matter protests and rioters. And the other were riots. They were rioters at those protests. Let's just be real. OK. Um, but they would know these claim these false equivalencies between riot, the rioters and the um, insurrectionists. Here's a problem. Black Lives Matter has never claimed to be a Christian organization, a conservative Christian organization talking about Christian values. However, and we'll kind of go into this a little bit later, but a lot of people at um, that insurrection, they were claiming that. There were prayers there. The Proud Boys did a prayer. First John 2 9 says, If anyone claims to be in the light but hates his brother, he is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is no cause for, of stumbling in him. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness. He does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. <laughs> Don't let me get started on that one. But there was violence, though, with mixed in with the name of God. My issue with my church not condemning that is like, um, by being silent, literally by being silent, not admonishing the people that need to be admonished. It's like, people get mad at me for saying this too. It's like, Watermark is a safe place for racists. Watermark is a safe place for domestic terrorists. And prove me, prove that I'm wrong. Or don't at me. It's like, hey. These are on, if these are non-believers that are going to claim those values, that's honestly, that's the world. The world's going to world, right? Sinners going to sin, you know, <laughs> heathens going to heath. I don't know what that term is, but whatever. But Christians, we have a different set of standards. And that's what, that's who, you know, church is for. That's who the church is speaking to, or my pastors should be speaking to. Because there are believers who, who, um, who are like sympathizing with people who are rioting. You know, and like the problem is, it's like by them not saying like, hey, this is not godly behavior. If you're going to claim to be a Christian, look at this behavior. It's not godly. It's not God honoring because it's not. There's nothing biblical about what happened, all the violence and stuff that happens, especially from people who are claiming, claiming they 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 really they love conservative Christian values. OK, the third thing, third thing is really important. Uh, the truth for Christians is that God chooses people who are in authority. That's, that's biblical. Okay. And the thing is like, my pastors know this. They've said this. Now here's some verses that are applicable to our day and age. Chapter 13, verse one, every person is to be in subject, subjection to their governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. And those which exist are established by God. That's, you know, God's word says it cuts between like, you know, bone and flesh. It's the truth. It just, the sort of truth that just cuts between all the BS, like, you know, and that's what got me. Whenever Trump was elected, um, I was not happy. This girl was not happy, excited. And my church was like, you know what? He's a president. God chose him. And I didn't believe it. I fought it. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'll tell you guys later, but I understand that God chose Trump to be president because um, when I look at how much has been exposed how much has happened with that, what has been like, what has transpired over these four years. I don't think that would have been possible if Trump, like we wouldn't have seen that our eyes have been opened without Trump being president, you know? 
And so in this moment was an opportunity for the church to say, you know what, the people who, if you're a believer and you're angry about this, I can, I can mourn with you. I'm also going to share the truth with you that Joe Biden is the president now. God chose him. God placed him in leadership. And then they have to work through that too. Like you, we have to understand that this is what is, you know, there's no two ways about it. And that was a really missed opportunity. You know, we don't have to have peace, but we have to have the truth. So those are the things about their interaction, insurrection, interaction, I keep saying that. The insurrection that I think that, you know, my church really, what is it? Takembe Mugumbo themselves. Takembe Mutumbo. I have to make sure I look at this. You just, there's a layup and they just like to themselves, like, you know, after their witness to the world.